Landscape Mixed Media Paintings with Ms. Bowley. Why are we doing this? Well, first of all, we're representing our understanding and knowledge about the landforms of Canada through our artwork. I also am hoping that you get to experiment with some different art materials. We're gonna learn about the basics of landscape painting, including words like foreground, middle ground, background, and also we're going to be using an element of art called contrast in our artwork. More about that later. So contrast just means difference. So in terms of artwork, it means difference between the different elements like light, color, size, texture, etc. So if we pair something that's really dark with something that's really light, it makes both of those elements more powerful and stronger because there's just more difference between them and it's nice for our eyes to look at. So if you notice this top example has very little contrast and the bottom example has a lot of contrast. Do you remember a couple weeks ago when we looked at Lauren Harris and the group of seven? Notice how Lauren Harris's work often has really high contrasts, a lot of dark darks and light lights. They're kind of moody. Um, we're gonna try to borrow that element of contrast for our own work. So our goals are for our end product, we wanna have a piece that has lots of dark darks and lots of light lights. And we wanna experiment with different art materials. And we're representing our knowledge of regions of Canada. So we wanna communicate a feeling about a place or some information maybe about a place. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is gather your materials. So by now you're probably familiar with what you need for watercolor painting. So pause the video here and you can go grab some of this other stuff. So pencil and eraser, other drawing materials, including pastel, crayon, pencil crayon, or markers. And if you have watercolor paper and masking tape, those things are great to have as well. Um, if you don't have watercolor paints, another kind of paint will do. Okay, so here I am at my workspace. Um, I'm going to show you what I'm using. So I'm using my watercolor paper and my watercolor palette. I've grabbed some wax crayon and I've grabbed pastels as well. I love oil pastels. I've got some paintbrushes and water, obviously, and a pencil to draw my pencil sketch. And I have some different Sharpie markers, um, and I'm using sort of like earth tone type colors. Um, Sharpie markers are good because they don't wash away with the watercolor. Um, but if you have other markers, those will work too. So I'm going to show you how to tape down your paper. So sometimes watercolor artists will tape their paper to their work surface, um, whether that's a board or a table or what. Um, the, the purpose of this is to allow you to have a nice little border, a little white border around, but it also makes your make sure that your paper doesn't buckle and wrinkle. Um, from having too much water on it. So this is an optional step. One thing to note is once you start taping your paper down, you're not gonna be able to move it. So tape it somewhere that you can leave it for the whole duration of this project. All right, step two is find a reference image. So we're looking at regions of Canada in social studies. So I'd like you to find an image of one particular region that you really enjoyed learning about. You can do this by searching on Google Images. You can go to your social studies assignments and go into some of the videos that fly over the different regions and take a screenshot. Or if you're doing um, one of the regions that you've actually been to, you can actually use your own photograph that you've taken. It's up to you. So step three, once you've found your image is to make a pencil sketch. So I have my reference image up in the top uh, right hand corner of the video and I'm going to use a pencil for this and I have an eraser as well. Um, I'm going to try to keep my pencil lines as light as I can and I am not caring too much about details here. All I'm trying to do is 
block in the areas where I'm gonna be painting large areas of color. Okay, so what I've just done is I've done a horizon line. So I'm showing where the sky and the land meet each other. And now I'm just filling in some of those other areas. So see that, that section I just drew is those trees that you can see in the background. And I'm drawing the water, the line where the water is. And now this is that big Canadian shield chunk right in the foreground there. So remember last week we talked about having things in the foreground being bigger, things in the background are smaller. Okay, so um, keeping that in mind, keeping those distinctions in mind as we're drawing. So as you notice when I drew my trees, all I did was draw like vertical lines. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add more detail to those trees with my paints. I don't need to draw it in with my pencil. All right, so that is it. Thanks for watching this beginning part of our video.